Alright guys, this is a quick startup on the GFH series. Uh, we're working on a 150 right now. I'll go into some, uh, just some basic components and basic startup. I'm not going to go into anything in complex detail or anything. So come on over and take a look at it. Like I said, this is our GFH 150 uh, because it puts out 150 pounds an hour. Basic electronic components here is we have our terminal block. This unit's actually powered up right now. Um, transformer for 24 volts. Main board over here. Maybe if you pan around and catch the White Rogers, that's the uh, ignition control. Um, when you receive this unit, you want to check out a couple things. First, you're going to want to check all the wires in your terminal block and on your board. Make sure all the connections are good. Um, and then we'll go into the burner. This is our complete burner, blower, gas valve package. Um, handles all the combustion. Um, you'll want to double check all your plugs here. You got a plug up front here, and the power for this blower is actually back here. It's a three pin plug. Um, all your gas valve assembly is right here. Let's see if I can get this plug back in. Drain valve, fill valve. Um, with some of the other units, placement of these can vary due to the size. Um, the GFH 300 has two burner packages, and the 450 will have uh, three burner packages. So. Right now, um, this unit has been powered up. It's already been through its five minute warm up. After the initial power up, it goes through a warm up. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, and we've hooked up a signal generator uh, just to give you some basic uh, functionality so we can run this thing. So, the very first thing after checking all of that, of course, check your plumbing, make sure all your plumbing is correct. Um, you'll also want to look at your steam dispersion piping, make sure that's all correct, as well as your flue piping. Um, we'll come back around the back here. It's going to be kind of hard to see since this is on a test stand, but for a 150, the flue piping comes right through the back. Um, back here is also your pressure switch for the flue. And your steam dispersion will come out the top. Also, this unit's shipped with ionic beds. Typically, they're shipped loose underneath in the box. You want to make sure you get those installed before you fire the unit up. Running back to the electrical real quick. Right here, the terminal block labeled L1 and L2 is for your 120 volts AC incoming. There's also a ground lug right off to the right of it. Alright, now we're going to fire this unit up, um, we're going to do a couple checks, um, the main one we're going to do a combustion analysis on it. Um, first we're going to give it a quick signal to get the burners fired up, we're going to crank it all the way up to 10. You want to do the combustion analyst at 100% demand output. So how we're going to do this is we have our combustion analyzer. We have to probe in the flue. So we're going to wait until this fires up. We'll let it burn for about 45 seconds before we start taking any readings. Now let's take a look at the actual CO2 output. That's what we're going to be looking at here. Um, in the IOM, we state uh, anywhere from 8.5 to 9.5. As you can see, this one's sitting at uh, right about 8.99%. So 
This one's this one has been preset um, as all the GFH units that leave the factory. They're all preset to uh, about nine. So I'll show you where you can adjust this reading. On the burner package, it's actually part of the gas valve. Uh, there's a screw right up in here. Um, you could just use the slotted screwdriver and and I turned it enough. All right, so what I did is I turned it enough to where the gas air mixture is incorrect and it actually took out the blower or the burner. So once it fires back up, we'll get this set. So I'm just going to adjust this one back to uh, 9 here. I'm rotating it uh, clockwise to reduce the number. Right there. So we'll leave it sit right there. Um, nine's, uh, nine's a pretty good number. To to get it to um, seeing the burners run well. With that. Another thing is gas pressure. I want to talk about a little bit. Um, this unit, uh, what I've seen in the field is this unit runs best right around uh, eight to nine in inches of water column. This one right now is, while it's running, is actually running at about six. So it can run at six. Uh, but like I said, works best around eight to nine inches of water column. You never want to exceed uh, half psi or 14 inches. You can uh, you can cause damage to the gas valve. So we'll end it there for right now. Thanks, guys.